Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Islamic Audiobooks Collection. I will be reading Stories of the Prophets by Ibn Kathir, which we downloaded from galamullah.com. Let's read. Page 38. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Prophet Ibrahim. Peace be upon him. Abraham. Description of Abraham and his family. Some of the people of the book stated that his name was Abraham ibn Tariq, ibn Nahur, ibn Sarugh, ibn Ragu, ibn Balig, ibn Ahir, ibn Shale, ibn al ibn Sam, ibn Noah. They said that when Tariq was 75 years old, he had Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran had a son named Lot. They also said that Abraham was the middle child and Haran died in the lifetime of his father in the land where he was born, the land of the Chaldeans, al Galdanian, also known as Babylonia. At that time, some people worshipped idols of stone and wood. Others worshipped the planets, stars, sun and moon. Still, others worshipped their kings and rulers. Abraham was born into that atmosphere, into a typical family of that ancient time. The head of the family was not even an ordinary idolater, but was one who totally rejected Allah and who used to make the idols with his own hands. Some traditions claim that Abraham's father died before his birth and he was raised by an uncle whom Abraham called father. Other traditions said that his father was alive and was named Azir. Into that family, Abraham was born, destined to stand against his own family, against the entire system of his community. In brief, he stood against all kinds of polytheism. Abraham's childhood. He was endowed with spiritual understanding from an early age. Allah enlightened his heart and mind and gave him wisdom from childhood. Allah the Almighty stated, Indeed, we bestowed aforetime on Abraham his portion of guidance and we were well acquainted with him as to his belief in the oneness of Allah, etc. Quran 21 verse 51 During his childhood, Abraham realized that his father made strange statues. One day, he asked him about what it was he made. His father replied that he made statues of gods. Abraham was astonished and he spontaneously rejected the idea. Being a child, he played with such statues, sitting on their backs as people sit on the backs of donkeys and mules. One day, his father saw him riding the statue of Marduk and he became furious. He ordered his son not to play with it again. Abraham asked, What is this statue, father? It has big ears, bigger than ours. His father answered, It is Marduk, the god of God's son. These big ears show his deep knowledge. This made Abraham laugh. He was only seven years old at that time. Abraham's hatred for idols. Years passed and Abraham grew. Since his childhood, his heart had been full of hatred for these idols. He could not understand how a sane person could make a statue and then worship what he had made. He noticed that these idols did not eat, drink or talk and they could not even turn themselves right side up if someone turned them upside down. How then could people believe that such statues would harm or benefit them? Abraham's people had a big temple full of idols, in the middle of which was a niche accommodating the biggest gods which was of different kinds, qualities and shapes. Abraham used to go to the temple with his father when he was a child, greatly despised all that wood and stone. What surprised him was the way his people behaved when they entered the temple. They bowed and started to cry begging and imploring their gods for help, as if the idols could hear 
or understand their requests. At first, such a sight seemed funny to Abraham, but later he began to feel angry. Was it not astonishing that all these people could be deceived? What added to the problem was that his father wanted him to be a priest when he was grown. He wanted nothing more from his son that he revere those statues. Yet, Abraham never stopped displaying his hatred and disdain of them. Abraham discovers a love. One night, Abraham left his house to go to a mountain. He walked alone in the dark until he chose a cave in the mountain where he sat resting his back against its wall. He looked at the sky. He had hardly seen it when he remembered that he was looking at planets and stars which were worshipped by some people on earth. His young heart was filled with tremendous pain. He considered what was beyond the moon, the stars and the planets, i.e. Allah, and was astonished that these celestial bodies were worshipped by men when they had been created to worship and obey their creator, appearing and disappearing at his command. Abraham reasons with celestial worshippers. Abraham addressed his people who worshipped celestial bodies as Allah Almighty revealed. Thus did we show Abraham the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, that he be one of those who have faith and certainty. When the night covered him over with darkness, he saw a star. He said, This is my Lord. But when it set, he said, I like not that those who set. When he saw the moon rising up, he said, This is my Lord. But when it set, he said, Unless my Lord guides me, I shall surely be among the erring people. When he saw the sun rising up, he said, This is my Lord, this is greater. But when it set, he said, O oh, my people, I am indeed free from all that you join as partners in worship with Allah. Verily, I have turned my face towards him who has created the heavens and the earth. Hanifan, Islamic monotheism, i.e. worshipping none but Allah alone. And I am not one of the al-Mushrikeen, those who worship others besides Allah. His people disputed with him. He said, Do you dispute with me concerning Allah while he has guided me and I fear not those whom you associate with Allah in worship? Nothing can happen to me except when my Lord, Allah, wills something. My Lord comprehends in his knowledge all things. Will you not then remember? And how should I fear those whom you associate in worship with Allah, though they can neither benefit nor harm, while you fear not that you have joined in worship with Allah things for which he has not sent down to you on any authority? So which of the two parties has more right to be in security? If you but know. It is those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship none but him alone, and confuse not their belief with zulm, wrong, i.e. by worshipping others besides Allah, and for them only there is security, and they are the guided. And that was our proof which we gave Abraham against his people. We raise whom we will in degrees. Certainly, your Lord is all-wise, all-knowing. Quran 6, verse 75 to 83. In that debate, Abraham clarified to his people that these celestial bodies do not serve as deities and cannot be worshipped as partners with Allah the Almighty. Indeed, these bodies are created things, fashioned, controlled, managed and made to serve. They appear sometimes and disappear at others, going out of sight from our world. However, Allah the Almighty does not lose sight of anything and nothing can be hidden from him. He is without end, everlasting, without disappearance. There is no other deity but Allah. Abraham made clear to them, first, that the celestial bodies are unworthy of worship, and second, that they are among the signs of Allah. 
Almighty Allah commanded. And from among his signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. Prostrate not to the sun, nor to the moon, but prostrate to Allah, who created them, if you really worship him. Quran 41 verse 37 Abraham's reasoning helped to reveal the truth, and then the conflict between him and his people began for the worshippers of the stars and planets did not stand mute. They began arguing and threatening Abraham. Abraham replied, Do you dispute with me concerning Allah while he has guided me? And I fear not those whom you associate with Allah in worship. Nothing can happen to me except when my Lord, Allah, wills something. My Lord comprehends in his knowledge all things. Will you not then remember? How should I fear those whom you associate in worship with Allah, though they can neither benefit nor harm, while you fear not that you have joined in worship with Allah, things for which he has not sent down to you any authority. So which of the two parties has more rights to be in security? If you but know, it is those who believe in the oneness of Allah and worship him alone and confuse not their belief with zulm, wrong by worshipping others besides Allah, for them only their security, and they are guided. Quran 6 verse 80 to 82 Abraham reasons with idolaters. The curtains are drawn on the first category of people, those who were worshipping celestial bodies. The next situation reveals the second group, those who were practicing idolatry. Allah gave Abraham the reasoning he needed the first time and every time he argued with his people. Almighty Allah declared, and that was our proof which we gave Abraham against his people. We raised whom we will in degrees. Certainly, your Lord is all-wise, all-knowing. Quran 6 verse 83 Abraham did his best to make his people heedful to the belief in the oneness of Almighty Allah and to the worship of him alone. He bade them to firmly renounce the worship of idols. He said to his father and his people, What are these images to which you are devoted? They said, We found our fathers worshipping them. He said, Indeed, you and your fathers have been in manifest error. They said, have you brought us the truth, or are you one of those who play about? He said, Nay, your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, who created them, and of that I am of the witnesses. Quran 21, verse 52 to 56. Abraham reasons with his father. All was finished between Abraham and his people, and the struggle began. The most amazed and furious was his father or his uncle who had raised him, for it is well known he not only worshipped idols, but sculpted and sold them as well. Abraham felt that it was his duty, as a good son, to advise his father against this evil, so that he could be saved from Allah's punishment. Being a wise son, he did not make his father feel foolish, nor did he openly laugh at his conduct. He told him that he loved him, thereby hoping to generate fatherly love. Then he gently asked him why he worshipped lifeless idols who could not hear, see or protect him. Before his father could become angry, he hastily added, O oh my father, verily, there has come to me of knowledge that which came not unto you. So follow me, I will guide you to a straight path. O oh my father, worship not Satan, verily, Satan has been a rebel against the most beneficent, Allah. O my father, verily, I fear lest a torment from the most beneficent, Allah, overtake you as that you may become a companion of Satan in the hellfire. He, the father, said, Do you reject my gods, O Abraham? If you stop not this, I will indeed stone you. So get away from me safely before I punish you. Abraham said, 
peace be upon you. I will ask forgiveness of my Lord for you. Verily, he is unto me ever most gracious, and I shall turn away from you and from those whom you invoke besides Allah. Quran 19 verse 43 to 48. Abraham debates with the idolaters. His father's harsh treatment did not stop Abraham from delivering the message of truth. Angry and sad to see people prostrate before idols, he was determined to stamp out these practices and went to the town to debate with the people, knowing full well that he might suffer harm. Like a wise doctor searching for the cause of a sickness so as to prescribe the proper cure, or like a judge who questioned the accused sharply so that he might detect the truth, Abraham asked them, Do the idols see you when you prostrate before them? Do they benefit you in any way? They quickly tried to defend their beliefs. They argued that they knew the idols were lifeless, but that their forefathers had worshipped them. To them, this was proof enough for their belief. Abraham explained that their forefathers had been wrong. This angered them and they retorted, Are you condemning our gods and our forefathers or are you just joking? Abraham showed no fear as he replied, I am serious. I come to you with a true religion. I have been sent with guidance from our Lord, who alone is worthy of worship, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and who regulates all affairs of life, unlike the dumb idols, which are just stone and wood. To convince them that the idols could not harm him, he challenged, I have already condemned them. If they had any power, they would have harmed me by now. That is it for today. Jazakallah khair for listening.